Welcome everybody. My name is Carol and I'm so pleased to be moderating and helping for this first in the webinar series for Know My World. Thank you so much to Lisa Delaporte and Alicia Racino for joining us tonight. And you can see on our map where we are all located. Several Aussies, as you can see down here with all the smiley faces. And our presenters are over here, probably at the breakfast table. <laughs> Hopefully not in pyjamas, but they're in a different time zone to us. And they're going to be presenting a series of webinars about Know My World over June and July. And this is number one in the series. And in two weeks' time, they'll do another. And in July, we'll also have them presenting on July 8 and 22. So I'll remind you of those dates at the end. I'm going to move to the next slide so that you can see where we're going with tonight's presentation. And I would like to now welcome both Lisa and Alicia to introduce themselves to our audience. And thank you everyone for joining us here. It's quite exciting for a first time. Over to you, Lisa. Uh, thank you so much, Carol, for that lovely introduction. Um, yes, so this is a four-part webinar series. And the first one, this is the topic, Challenging Gender Stereotypes Through Digital Diaries. In each of the four webinars that we will be presenting, there will be some sort of social issue that gets addressed. And we will explain how a Know My World cross-cultural exchange, a digital cross-cultural exchange, can be used with modern technology to create conversations around global issues while students have opportunities to enact some sort of local change in their communities. So that's sort of the direction of what this is going to look like for you and for us over the next few weeks in June and July. So, uh, all right, so a little bit about Know My World. We are a global education resource that connects participants digitally in shared learning experiences. And we'll get a little more in depth about what that means exactly, but it's classrooms connecting. And our mission is to offer a multitude of platforms and projects for exchange and growth between various countries and cultures. Right now, we have been connected in more than 24 countries. And just so you can see a little bit about Alicia and I, um, I am the program operations manager. I have been with Know My World for uh, about a little over two and a half years now. I take care of a lot of the policies and procedures, database maintenance, uh, I make sure that everything is running smoothly in the exchanges that teachers are involved in. Um, and just a fun fact about me, I, I lived in the Galapagos Islands for three months, working with um, an international partnership through service learning, so I had a lot of opportunities to volunteer and work in local communities, which sort of helped me uh, get inspired to do a lot of work around global conversations and local change. Alicia. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, my name is Alicia Rosigno, and I am the Educational Coordination Manager for Know My World. I've been with Know My World for about three years now, and my job with Know My World is uh, facilitation. I am the manager of facilitation uh, for people who are in exchanges. I am also a um, we have interns that come in to Know My World that I uh, train to be facilitators, so I do that as well. Um, I am also an um, instructional technology specialist, and um, I help with our participants in exchanges find um, new technologies for uh, their exchanges with us. Uh, with that, uh, personally, I am a homeschool teacher. I am an at-home tutor, and um, I enjoy incorporating Know My World 
in my daily life with my students um, every day. They're constantly asking me when they can do an exchange um, with us in Know My World. A fun fact about me, uh, being that I'm a homeschool teacher, I connected uh, two of my homeschool students who were ages uh, four and six with a family in Canada, and they played Minecraft. It was a really great um, experience for them to connect with other people around the world. Um, the goals of the connection was to um, make friendships and use creative art therapy um, in their online session as I'm also pursuing a um, certificate in creative art therapy as well. Great, thanks Alicia. <laughs> um, so the webinar deliverable, as I was explaining before, we are going to show you how to use the Know My World Digital Exchange. And today we're going to focus on Penzu technology. And this is all going to show you how to optimize student CCAL. CCAL is something that uh, we have a little box down here. It just stands for Social, Emotional, Cultural, and Academic Learning Outcomes, um, which are different aspects of learning that can get pulled out of each of the exchanges. And we'll get more involved in what that looks like uh, in a few slides. So basically what we're going to do today, we're going to talk a little bit about what exactly a digital cross-cultural exchange is. We're going to touch on the importance of facilitation, which is what Alicia and I and a group of wonderfully talented other people do as well. Then you're going to have a little walkthrough of technology in the classroom. Alicia's going to give you a Penzu demonstration and allow you to uh, work with the technology as well. And then we will give you this exchange project example showing you about how gender stereotypes can be broken using digital diaries. And then we'll have a few minutes for questions and answers. So, um, so Know My World, we at Know My World we use social and emotional learning, intercultural communication, and cultural competency in all aspects. Um, of the work that we do in our digital cross-cultural exchanges, um, in our projects and programs that we have for the classroom, and in the professional development that we create. Today we are going to focus on the digital exchange, but this social, emotional, intercultural, and cultural competency all helps to create, um, to contribute powerfully to the global working and impact social change in the world. Um, so what exactly is the digital cross-cultural exchange? It's just a learning relationship between two or more classrooms in the world. Uh, it focuses on project collaboration through the internet and use of various digital media. Um, luckily, we have an instructional technology specialist, Alicia, who is always there to answer questions to keep us up on the latest technology based on the needs of the teacher. What projects are they doing? Things like that. Um, but what we've come to discover is while students are engaged in these exchanges because they're connecting, whether you're in Australia or India or Africa or South America, you're having a, a cultural exchange. So there are interesting conversations that arise. You know, what can we talk about? How do we address these issues? What's the most appropriate way to go about having this sort of conversation? And it's as much the experience of the student as it is the teacher. So the facilitator is there to help create um, an easy connection. Because whatever experience the teacher has is going to reflect the experience of the student. That's what we've come to discover through these exchanges. Um, our exchanges tend to last between four and eight weeks. So there's a bit of a planning period and then an implementation period. And then we collect content which we share with you as well, if that's something that you're interested in keeping for your classroom or school symposiums or things like that. Um, and the exchanges are built on lots of different levels based on what it is you're interested in incorporating in your classroom. So whether it's project-based learning, intercultural relationships, we've had multi-generational exchanges before, 
but they all still have this model of social, emotional, cultural, and academic learning. Um, and academic is a big one because you're, you're in classrooms and you're teaching subjects. So that is where we start. What is it that you're teaching? What is it that you have to make sure you get covered in your classroom? And then what are your other goals? What else is it that you're looking for your students to understand throughout this process? And the facilitator, which is sort of this process on the right side of the page here, um, we locate a match based on your needs, we introduce you to them, and we create uh, a comfortable relationship. And relationships that get developed in Know My World, a lot of them last, we have teachers that end up staying on and working together even after the facilitator is done helping because they just want to keep their students in the conversation. We've had exchanges go uh, for full years and we've had teachers reconnect again um, year after year <laughs> for, for a few years now. Um, we help you keep uh, timeline and open communication throughout the process because it is something that's online. We were having a discussion earlier in the chat box actually about this idea of self-motivation when you're not going and seeing someone every day. When it's online, a facilitator is really there to help keep you accountable to the timeline that you've set for yourself. Okay, what is it we said we were going to do this week? And we'll see that as we go through the process of the exchange in a few more slides. Um, and like I said, we collect the content and then we document the content and measure the impact through surveying. So Alicia's going to take it over now to talk to you a little bit about uh, some technology in the classroom. And uh, yeah, so Alicia. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, so I am the instructional technology specialist. So um, when we think about incorporating technology into the classroom, it can seem quite challenging. When we first had the idea to have our students work on a digital project, we asked ourselves, what platforms can I use? What capabilities do these platforms provide me and my students? How do my students connect? The first step in choosing a platform is deciding the basics of your project and what you will have your students do throughout the project. Will they be making posters? Will they be discussing? Will they be journaling? After you've made this decision, researching some basic platforms out there for your students to use in the classroom can help eliminate that overwhelming feeling of what platform to use. In this project, students will be journaling and reflecting on gender equality. Therefore, a suitable platform would be for your students to write, reflect, and share. But what's so great about Know My World is we are specialized in helping you find the platform that is right for your project and right for your classroom. Um, yes, I am the instructional technology specialist and I help the rest of my team find new platforms for teachers um, for their exchanges. So, um, when we look at this exchange in particular, we're going to be signing up for a free account um, because we always want to have that as our first choice when using a technology platform. Again, your facilitator in your exchange can surely help you in this area to help you choose the service that would help fit your needs. Um, we're specialized to scout for you and give you options to choose from for your project. In this project in particular, teachers decided to use Tenzu. Tenzu is a journaling website for students, teachers, and individuals. With a free account with Tenzu, you can write as many journal entries as you want where you can insert photos, colors, and make your entry reflect you. When you have completed the entry, you can share them with another Tenzu account. And with these free capabilities of Tenzu, you can see that this website surely fits the needs in this project. So we are going to do a Penzu demonstration. Um, there is a link that I believe Carol has just put into the chat. Thank you, Carol. Um, and I'm going to show this on our on here as well. We'll do a screen share. Okay, so as we can see, here is 
Chen Zhu. And um, on this website, I'm hoping that everybody is there with me because Lisa and I would like you to go ahead and go to the website um, so I can show you a step-by-step -step process on how to create your free journal. Please let me know when you are there so we can continue forward. Okay, the best way for us to do that is to just select the tick and which gives you a green tick beside your name. And you'll find the ticks alongside the smiley face in the participant pod. So you've got a few green ticks showing up there for you. If there's anyone on mobile devices or iPads, that may not work for you, so just put it into the text chat. Great, I'm just going to give everybody a couple more seconds and then we'll continue forward. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Tisa. And Libby and Lisa. Kenneth, I see you too. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue forward with this. Um, so basically, when you get to the website, penzu.com, it asks you to go ahead and you're going to fill in your full name, your email, and a password. After you do that, of course, you're going to create your free journal. And what's great about this is Penzu doesn't send you any updates or any spam type of emails. Um, all you do here is just put in your information and then you go right into your, um, into your journal. So what I'm going to do, I have a Penzu account myself. So what I'm going to do is sign in. Okay, so here you can see is my journal. When everybody has signed in or created a journal, this will pop up on your screen. I've already created mine to have my color background and the title. So you can go ahead and choose a title that you would prefer for your journal. And then you go ahead and click on your journal. Yes, it's very, very, very easy. And here I have my, some of my entries in my journal. One of them, I'm welcoming everybody here today to our great webinar. So please go ahead and let me know that you've gotten this far. And if you have any questions. Yeah, I'm just noticing that we can personalize as we go, and that always delays folks. <laughs> we need to choose. Yeah, it's very, this is a very, very simple website. Um, it gets you into what you want to do, journaling, you know, just. It's a great journaling website. You can keep it, keep it private to yourself. And I'm actually going to show you um, how to share because you also can share with other people if you'd like your journal entries. Yes, you can go ahead and personalize it a little later. Absolutely. Yeah, the one thing that I've just noticed is that it gives you the option to be reminded to come to your diary. I like that too. We're so busy these days. So I've set mine to remind me to do my entries once a week. 
Perfect, Carol. Yes, I do that too. I have it um, go off from me, I believe, every Monday morning. I have a, a notification from Penzu. That's the only notification I get. If I want the notification, that's how you set it. Otherwise, Penzu will not send you anything else. It's great. Okay. I'm going to go ahead since it seems that everybody's doing pretty well with this and it's a very simple um, step. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to share your um, Penzu account if you would like, which we actually have. I can show you here, and we actually have it on our slides, Lisa and I. But I'm going to go ahead and show you here since it's already up. So when you have your journal up and you're ready to share it with somebody, there's an, a little ellipsis on the right-hand corner where you're going to click, and then you click on Share. After you do that, you can enter um, a person's email address and an optional message so you can share that privately. When you send a private journal entry, the other person has to have a Penzu account. If you'd like to send it um, publicly, they don't have to have a Penzu account, but you can go from one Penzu account to the other to share. And then you put in an optional message if you'd like and send that email right on out to whomever you like to share your journal with. And again, of course, you can go ahead and add in pictures and things like that. And I'm going to show you on our, on our slides of how to go ahead and do that. So any questions with Penzu with signing up or anything like that? Is this, there is a question in the, uh, in the box, I'm just not sure. Can you change the mobile number to send SMS to Australia? I'm not sure what that means, honestly. A mobile number. I'm not sure either, actually. I apologize. Lisa, are you referring to the Penzu? Is there a mobile number app in there? Oh, on the mobile app. Oh, the mobile app. I got gotcha. you. Um, I don't see why you couldn't change it. I don't see that being an issue. Oh, only because you were saying in UK. I, w I wasn't aware of that. Have you tried using the app yet, or have you just used it on the computer, Alicia? I have it on my on my phone. I do. I have the app, and I didn't have any issues. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. Yay. Great. Great. If your journal is locked, I have I see that question. If your journal is locked, I don't think you can share it. I've never locked my journal. I can I'm actually sharing my journal frequently. Um, but if there's a lock on it, you shouldn't be able to share it with other people. Okay, I'll just put a short paragraph in, <laughs> borrowed from someone else's words. <laughs> There's mine shared. Thank you for that instruction. That was very simple. Yes, it is. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Okay. It is very easy. Very easy, simple. So, Alicia, can you move the slides, or do you need me to move them forward for you? I'm going to try right now. Let's see. Oh, it went through. Oh, perfect. Okay. So, we've done step one and step two. I demonstrated those. But let me go ahead and um, show you a step four, because we gave our journal title, and you can customize your journal. Carol went ahead, and she shared a journal, too. Um, as you can see in this slide, I had one of my um, one of my interns, actually, we use this for facilitation training, 
And um, she went ahead and uh, put a beautiful, beautiful picture into her Pundu account. And you can definitely upload pictures as well if you would like. So um, you can really customize it. Even though it's a free account, they give you um, many capabilities to make it a little bit of your own. So it, it's great for a free account for Pundu. And again, we already went ahead and I showed you how to share that. And sharing it uh, publicly and privately. And now back to you, Lisa, about our digital exchange. Okay, great. Thank you, Alicia. I know I know there are still a couple of people having problems with the app. Maybe uh, maybe after the presentation is over, we can work to see if we can help them out somehow. <laughs> um, Okay, so moving on to the digital exchange aspect. This is how you can use the digital exchange and Pendu technology to optimize student decal. I'll show you the model for that um, in just a moment. I saw that Carol liked that before. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> You're going to like the next slide then. Um, so this project example is one that we came up with, understanding and breaking through gender stereotypes uh, using Pendu. And basically, as Alicia explained with the technology before, what we would do is say, all right, what type of project are we using? What type of classrooms do we have? Um, what type of technology are we going to have to use to best benefit what it is that we're going to do? Um, and the Pendu is used for reflection. Uh, and Alicia didn't go into it too much, but if you end up, if your school decides that they want this sort of technology, they do have. Uh, they do have it for purchase, so you can buy it for your classroom, so you can have multiple journals. And students could collaborate in journals if that was something that you wanted to do. Um, but they have other technology applications for that as well. This is technically used throughout this process for students to be able to explore um, their ideas of gender stereotypes and walk them through the process that this eight-week program has set out for them. So there are goals and milestones, there's a plan of action, and there are tasks that are all set out with the help of your facilitator. Um, and that's, again, the benefits of having a facilitator. We're all certified international educators. We've, we've either worked, studied, or lived abroad. Uh, we help you with your goal setting for your classrooms. And we help you create customized projects based on whatever it is that you're looking to do. Sometimes there are classrooms in countries that want to do sort of the same exact thing, and sometimes there are classrooms that want to do slightly different things and they want to compare and just have a cultural conversation based on uh, a certain topic or theme. Uh, so that's what we help you discover throughout the process. And it's with the help of the facility. With the help of a facilitator, it's not as scary as it seems because someone is there to support you the entire time. So for this project, we have Penzu for reflection, Google Community for the students to communicate with one another throughout the process, and Skype, uh, which is what they will use to connect and share with their final projects and things. Um, so. Most of the projects that we have tend to use more than one technology application uh, because there are different ways for students to connect. And that's really what the students are looking for. They're looking for ways to exchange information. Um, so certain things that happen in the classroom might call for one application. And assignments outside of the classroom might call for another application. There are a lot of different ways that you can use technology throughout the exchange process. So as promised, um, this is uh, CECAL, social, emotional, cultural, academic, and learning outcomes. As I said before, this is sort of a model that we use to look at how to deepen the content. Because academic, we do focus on the subject, the content, critical thinking skills, different areas that you need to focus on with your students. And then there are different aspects of social and emotional awareness, cultural competence, um, and then the learning outcomes of the students. So we look at all of these aspects when creating these projects with teachers. So 
So right into the project. Weeks one and two. Um, after the planning process and the goals are being set and everything is taken care of in that aspect of relationship building between teachers, um, the first thing that happens is some sort of introduction and discussion. So in the digital exchange, students will be required to introduce themselves, uh, share something that they discover through their reflection. Because when ta talking about issues such as these, Thank you, Carol. Yes, um, it's important to create an environment where students are comfortable sharing this sort of information. So allowing them an opportunity to explore and then figure out what pieces they want to share with other people. Um, and then responding to a participant from another country. So this is really helpful uh, to having a facilitator there as well. Uh, because if you're in your classroom and there's a teacher in another classroom, and their students are supposed to respond, but your students feel as though they're not getting the responses that they want, the facilitator can look back and say, okay, the goal set for every week were that each student was going to post a response to another student after they shared something that they discovered through their reflection. The facilitator can check in with the teacher and remind the teacher the tasks that have been set out by the teacher for the student. So it's creating a, a level of accountability. And the facilitator is there to make sure that all needs of the teachers and the students are being met. They help maintain communication throughout the process and they create learning relationships because it's learning how to stay accountable to one another in this sort of distant relationship. Um, and help with technology as well because that can be a little daunting sometimes. Um, and the other aspect that we incorporated into this exchange, which can be changed or tweaked based on the level of the student, is uh, intercultural dialogue for video conferences. Depending on the age of the students and the time difference, it's always uh, interesting to incorporate an aspect where students can talk with one another. Uh, and it's been successful in the past where it's part of their homework. They'll go home and they'll meet with either in groups or pairs uh, someone from another country to have a conversation about what's been being discussed in classrooms. So that's what's happening in the digital exchange. And Alicia, Alicia is going to walk you through what's happening with the Penzu technology during these two weeks. Alicia? Yes, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, so in Penzu, uh, we are going to be uh, reflecting with essential questions in weeks one and two in this exchange. So we want to keep in mind for the questions for the students to describe their first experience when they were aware of gender. Um, what does it look like to be different genders in your culture? Uh, we also want to have them reflect on what messages about your gender you can most closely identify with. Also, what effect do the messages you receive about gender have on your life? And again, um, with this, we use CCAL. And in weeks one and two, we are looking at social and learning outcomes, which is building relationships and appropriateness and reflection. And we're also looking at emotional, cultural, and academic, where there's self-awareness and critical thinking. Yeah, so each week there are different aspects of CCAL and, and it's all included and it's just about looking at how that's deepening the process throughout the exchange. So what we're actually going to do um, is we're going to have you take a moment and journal about one of these questions in the Penzu technology that we've just created with you. So we're sort of going to walk you through this process a little bit so you can get the experience um, of the essential questions and each week is going to be uh, deep in the essential questioning because of the technology that we're using, because we're using PenZoom. So we're going to ask you to take two minutes to journal and look at the essential questions for week two. I got to learn how to use that little hand arrow, Carol. <laughs> um, but if you want to look at 
Uh, what messages about your gender do you most closely identify with? Where are the messages coming from? What effect do the messages you receive about gender have on your life? So if you want to just take two minutes, go to your pen do journal. And then give me a little thumbs up when you're back in the room. I was just trying to grab the questions themselves from your original slide <laughs> and looks like others were also a little distracted there so I'll quickly put those in. Could you just repeat what you want us to do please? Oh yes, um, I was just asking that you look at these reflection questions and just choose one. Just choose one. Maybe you have, you know, if you can link a couple of the ideas, but just think about uh, messages about gender that you closely identify with and what effects they have on your life. And yes, the idea, Lisa, with these projects is that they are adaptable to any age. Um, it's just about how much you use each technology. But all of these questions can be adaptable for uh, first through twelfth grade. And even graduate school could do it. Yeah, what I like to do to preface that in the journal is to put the questions themselves. So I have now copied them into the text chat if others want to do the same. I hope I've got the right collection of reflections there. All right, just about one more minute. Doesn't have to be a whole lot, just something to get you thinking. Okay, I've only seen one taker people back. There we go. Okay, there's a thumbs up. I've got a couple of checks, a couple of thumbs up. <laughs> okay, I've done in the chat box. What I liked about it was that it uh, immediately saves things. I don't have to remember to go and save. Yeah, yeah, that is nice. I know. I think we've all had that experience where you've been working on something and then it disappears. <laughs> all right, so um, I think we've gotten a, a bunch of thumbs up and ticks, so we're going to move on for the sake of time. Um, and just catch up with us if you're still writing. So uh, for weeks three and four, um, after the introductions and discussions have been concluded, the students in this project would move on to some sort of research and community involvement. Um, and the nice thing about the exchange and the technology application is that they're designed to work together to create the project. Um, so looking at the weekly assignments under the digital exchange, what would be happening um, is students would be video conferencing and the Penzu reflections that they would do would help them discover um, 
who they wanted to interview in their community about views on gender. Is there a, a local community center that they go to after school? What piece of their community do they want to get involved in to create some sort of change or to get more information about what happens in the inner workings of that place? And they'll create a plan of action. So who are we going to interview? Who will we be talking to? Um, and what is it going to look like? So it gives the students a sense of agency. So often students have this question, well, what is it that I can do? How can I make change? What? And this is a project that can help show them the small steps that they can take. And it starts with having a conversation and asking some very simple questions. Um, the intercultural dialogue assignment that will be happening over these three weeks, uh, students will be sharing and responding about the research process because research is very interesting and it looks different at different uh, age levels. So it's always interesting to share how the process goes. And again, the essential questions will help them discover changes they would like to see in their local communities. And then it can create a conversation about the world and what changes they would like to see on a global scale. So what does this issue look like in the world? What does this issue look like in my backyard or in my neighborhood, in my community? So it gets them, gives them an opportunity to have this sort of conversation in the safety of their classroom so they can learn how to have this conversation. Um, and Alicia will take you through a bit of the Penzu technology again and what's happening with CCAL. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, again, we're looking at Penzu as um, our technology to reflect on the essential questions. And these two weeks, we want to look at what experiences have you had with gender stereotypes? Where do you see gender stereotypes in your community? Um, how do people in your community feel about our view of gender stereotypes? And what changes around gender stereotypes would you like to see in your community? We're really looking at deeper thinking for our students in this part of the exchange and having them reflect, really reflect in their journals. And again, CCAL, um, in these weeks we have cultural awareness, we have social and academic. Uh, when we're looking at it, the interviewing, we're looking at the video conferencing, and we're also looking at learning, um, interviewing, and research skills throughout these two weeks. Not sure um, what we're expected to do at this point. Have we lost? No. Have I lost sound? Can you hear me? Oh, uh, yes, I hear, hear you. Now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, did you did you hear me ask if uh, if anybody had any questions? Uh, I didn't, so <laughs> okay. thank you for repeating okay. that. <laughs> yeah, no, um, absolutely, sorry. Um, no, I just, I know that everyone has been asking questions along the way, but I just, I know this is a lot of information. Um, this is information that would happen over the course of a couple of months, and I'm, I just want to check in to see if anybody has any questions at this point about, yeah, all of yeah. the information that's been given. So yeah, there's quite a lot here, and I've just scrolled back to see if there were some questions. I think there's a couple of techie ones that you might have covered, like how do we save? Um, you know, that's automatic. That that that's really nice. You don't have to click anything to save. It just does it. Um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, what um, I wanted to do though was just make a comment because it struck a chord with me, and I was putting it into the text chat, and it might have scrolled by too quickly for you. But very recently, there was a TV program here which was looking at the impact of identity in different groups in our society. And it was mm -hmm. 
designed by an artist who interviewed the different groups. So he interviewed families of um, gay people who were uh, uh, adopting children. Uh, uh, he interviewed, with the help of a translator, uh, the deaf community. And what he did was he used those interviews to find out what was at the core of the identity. And some of it was around gender, which you might find of interest if you can get hold of the programs. Because what he did in the end was to express his view of how he saw the group's identity through gender and other issues as a piece of art. And it's truly amazing what he was able to, to do. And being able to communicate in an art form is quite um, unusual. I've not heard of this program before. And it immediately struck a chord with me that it was so similar to what you were doing with those mm -hmm. questions about gender. Yeah. Yeah, no, that sounds interesting. Is it the, the importance of identity in our tribe? That's the one, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's identity it's a very big piece, you know, and these you know, gender isn't something that we choose, it's something that we're given. Um, and there are a lot of cultural implications around this sort of conversation. Um, but it's one that's important for students to be able to have, you know, in in an educated way. So Especially, and that's why Penzu technology is so important in this type of project, is that it's going to be uh, different for each student, what they do and don't want to share. And that's why the journaling is nice, because it gives them a safe space to explore what they think about these issues. And then they can decide what it is they want to share. They can decide what it is they want to share with their teachers, what it is they want to share with their peers. But it creates a safe space for them to learn how to begin having these sorts of conversations. Because they are conversations that we have on a global scale, and they are conversations that we deal with in our local communities. So it's about finding ways to um, create that place for them. Because it's, it's complex. You're right. It's very complex. Mm, it's fascinating what you are able to do with a very deep set of appreciative inquiry questioning and a very simple online tool. We don't yeah. need to have, you know, very fancy systems and pieces of software. It can all be done through a simple collaborative sharing of diaries or journals. I love it. Absolutely. You know, and some kids feel that it's easy it's easiest to connect with someone in another part of the world. That was actually a reflection we got this semester when we did our surveys studying the impact of exchanges. One of the students said that um, the student who made them feel the most connected and the most understood was a world away. But they were so happy to have that experience because they were going through a very difficult time in their life and they needed someone to connect to. And the person that they connected with was in another country somewhere else in the world. So, you know, sometimes we feel safe to have these conversations, you know, when there's that distance. It's very interesting to see how kids respond to this. And it is, it's very simple technology. And it's important questioning. Absolutely. You know, sort of the goal. Mm. <laughs> So um, there's a question from Angie. Um, perhaps you might not see it, no, so I'll read it out. Angie says, so as a teacher, you'd buy it so you can monitor what your students are journaling or reflecting on? And that's her question. Um, I, I don't know, Alicia, if you want to answer this one. Um. Yeah, I can go ahead and answer that one. If you're looking to make this kind of like a, a classroom where you can go ahead and have your students join in and make comments and also grade and give assignments, um, I would recommend going to um, Penzu Classroom. This one, however, is still a great way to maybe get your students just um, 
involved in just journaling and getting used to Penzu on a more simple level. So um, this is, which is so great. And you also, again, you can share with other people, but if you decide to go pro, um, you have more capabilities, of course, and it's more like a classroom. You can have as many um, classes as you like. You can have as many students in there as you would like as well. And um, it's a, it's a one year fee of, I think like $50 a, a year. So it's a very, very reasonable price. Mm, well, that's that's really really useful, and I think that has answered Lisa P's question too about how to monitor it as an educator. So your Penzu classroom would certainly give you that. All right. Um, so if there's nothing else at this moment, we're just we've got two more slides to finish up the exchange, and then we'll come back to Q and A when we're done with that. Does that work to just move on for the next few minutes? Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so we spot. Did we do this one? Why do I feel lost? Did you do? Oh no, I started to do this, and my 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 video, my audio wasn't on. Okay. So weeks five and six. What's happening in the digital exchange? Uh, once they've gone out into the community and ask those questions, uh, done their research, they will be creating a final project where they create a video to showcase the community views and share the solutions that they've come up with in their groups, in their classrooms. Um, the intercultural dialogue assignment is the sharing and responding to the videos, which would be shared in Google community. Uh, Alicia, what's happening with Penzu Technology? And again, with Penzu technology, we want to reflect in our Penzu accounts and keep these essential questions. Uh, what can you do to create positive shift in gender stereotypes? Um, and how are other communities in the world addressing gender stereotype issues? And with CCAL again as well, in these weeks, we are looking at um, social, emotional, cultural, academic, and learning outcomes. So this is a very deep thinking of CCAL here. Um, the social with group work, emotional with choices, the academic with critical thinking, and um, the impact and assessment with the learning outcomes. All right. And to close it up, there would be uh, connection and completion. So after the students shared their information and they got to watch all of their videos on the Google community and commented on the videos, uh, it's important to allow them an opportunity to connect and reflect. It really helps. And sometimes the time differences don't always work out. So there are ways to share videos and have video diaries back and forth. <laughs> um, and again, this is a task and time management and a technology support issue with facilitation. And Alicia, real quick, Penzu technology. Sure, yep. And again, we're looking at more Penzu reflection, and we're looking at what are gender stereotype issues that our part, uh, partner faces in the community. Also, and what new awareness did you come to about your gender stereotypes in your culture? and your partner's culture in the world. And this is where we really, really want to um, reflect on um, because with exchanges, that's where, where it is most, most important um, with their reflection. And with CCAL as well, with cultural learning outcomes and social. Uh, so just a quick point of discussion, and I know we were starting to have this before, what are some of the benefits that some of you see to creating a project like this in your classroom? I can already see some benefits for adult learners as well as adult teachers because these strategies that you're discussing with us are universal or global 
yeah. and all, all encompassing and they're not uh, age biased. I think that the process itself is fantastic. It will really enable a greater global connectivity between educators and I can see now where I'd like to experiment with some of it for those whom I mentor as educators. So that's my bit. Would anyone else like to come to the microphone and just talk to us about what benefits they see? I can see some text happening too. Yeah, I see there was a comment saying it would work better for older than younger ones uh, because of the journaling. And, and I think that's true. Um, it, it'll, it'll look different at different age levels um, and that's where certain modifications can come in um, on how you would approach the questions, whether or not you would continue to use Pendu or whether you would use a different application. Um, but it, it's all adaptable. But yes, I agree. I probably would use something in addition to Pendu and change the question slightly. All right. Yep, just a different perspective. Ah, oh, I'm glad, Julie. Yes, yeah, Skyping would work or video diaries. Yep. All right, so we are down to the wire here. Um, thank you so much. Um, if there are any last questions or answers or questions <laughs> that I can answer, um, just throw it out there. Otherwise, this is our social media and contact information if you have um, any other questions or would like to contact us in the future. Okay, the last question would be, I think, in the minds of those who joined us tonight, when's the next one? You've whetted the appetite. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps you could tell me and I'll text it in. Uh, sure, we are doing it again on June 17th at uh, same time. Or, or is it, it is the 10th for you, right? I thought is the next one was June 24th. I thought we were leaving two weeks in between. Have I got that wrong? Oh, no, no, no. No, no, you're right. I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong date. Yes, June okay. 24th. I'm yeah, so June. sorry. It's <laughs> <Okay. laughs> hard with the time frames. And uh, do you have a topic for that one? Um, oh, I do. Oh, hang on. It's in. Uh, it's environmental it's sustainability. And what's the technology we're using? PictoChart, right? Yes, it's PictoChart and environmental sustainability. Could you just text that in for me? We're not picking up all your words there. Oh, sure. Thank you. And that's very good um, prompting there from Julie to Samantha that if you want to save any of the whiteboards, you can. And you do that by clicking on File, Save, Whiteboard and select the PDF. So are you okay with people doing that, Lisa and Alicia? Sure. Absolutely, absolutely. I will put my. I will also put my um, email into the chat as well, so anybody can email Lisa or I as well. Oh, you that's a good idea. idea. Mm, nice feedback from you, Libby. Thank you for that. So we're just down to the last few seconds, and I wanted to say a huge thank you to both Lisa Delaport and Alicia. Rosinho for your first webinar on Know My World. I was thoroughly intrigued with Penzu. I'm going to keep using it. Thank That's you, good. ladies. <laughs> and You're thank very you welcome. to our uh, thank you so much to our audience. You were very attentive today and I hope and I, I'm pretty sure you all gained quite a lot from that. So thank you all. Yes, thank you. It's been a pleasure.
Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, night, everybody. Bye. <laughs> I'll close the recording yeah. now. <laughs> Bye.